Stano program coordinator for Africa Year Region. Uh, who will facilitate this uh, workshop with all the facilitators from the National Disaster Management Agency and the Red Cross, but also representing the head of delegation of uh, the International Federation of the Red Cross, uh, the Sahel Cluster, for the opening ceremony. Uh, the governors and the deputy governors present here the vice acting vice this is a very important workshop and first of all we are saying thanks very much for responding to this uh, invitation even though it is a public holiday but you said no we have to put the interest of the country first so we say thank you very much. The International Federation of the Red Cross and Red Crescent Societies, the Gambia Red Cross Society, the National Disaster Management Agency, the Economic Community of West African States, with funding from European Union, have the pleasure to thank you for honoring our invitation to participate in this two-day high-level workshop on localization of aid for an effective disaster management. As auxiliary to the public authorities in the humanitarian field, the Red Cross National Societies are well placed to provide technical assistance to their national disaster management agencies in the implementation of the ECOWAS plan of action and commitments emanated from the 2008 GISAO meeting. In this uh, regard, this national workshop aims at gathering the key stakeholders to analyze and discuss the domestic legal framework for disaster management in light with the tools and instruments developed by ECWAS and IFRC. Uh, moreover, the, the workshop will serve as a consultation platform for the finalization of the ECOWAS Disaster Management Handbook and the development of a roadmap to guide the subsequent actions to enhance effectiveness and local empowerment in disaster response operations. And we hope the objectives that are set aside for this workshop will really be achieved at the end of the day and uh, we are confident that the Gambia will soon legislate the disaster law for effective and efficient coordination of international disaster response and train all the humanitarian actors and government authorities on the law for its smooth implementation. That is and gentlemen, distinguished humanitarian partner organizations, we are once again grateful for your co confirmation to participate in this very important workshop, the outcomes of which will impact positively on the lives of the Gambian population. Thanks for attendance and sparing your holiday for national interests. Also, our special thanks goes to the European Union for providing the funding to the IFRC to facilitate this process. On that note, I would like to inv invite the Executive Director of the National Disaster Management Agency to deliver his statement and also welcome everyone to this workshop. Thank you very much. Other than Seko Kaushik Isama is the Permanent Secretary one at the Office of the President. Your Excellency, you are welcome. And in on that note, I also want to acknowledge the also responsible for Africa region. You are welcome to the Gambia, my sister. Uh, my colleague, my brother, my friend, Alassane Senor, we all know him. So Alassane has always been there when it comes to humanitarian 
work in this country. So on that note, Rasa, I would like to acknowledge your presence. Our truly, I am leading my staff to build a truly proactive attitude towards risk reduction. This is because in a period of environmental uncertainty and increased weather events, we cannot but help to be forecasters and actors and not only responders. To be actors only, readily available on response situations. Chairperson, doing this cannot be a single entity business. For this reason, NDMA collaborates with the Gambia Red Cross Society and other humanitarian bodies from the United Nations to make sure that we build a culture of preparedness and resilient building. As I am speaking now, I want to use this opportunity to encourage the continued support from all partners within and outside the government to invest on risk reduction and mainstream short priorities into our departmental policies. During this two-day workshop, we will have a chance to learn the ECOWAS and IFRC handbook, the ECOWAS plan of action and the assessment tools, among other important documents. The consultation on the DM handbook will particularly help us to inform our partners about the trends in disaster risk reduction and financing within our sub-region. Chairperson. Furthermore, I want to mention that this workshop is also particularly interested in sharing progress about disaster law in our sub-region. Also, GRSC commissioned a research on disaster law in 2016 to review our legal preparedness for facilitating and regulating international disaster assistance. The lessons and recommendations from this study can be discussed to raise awareness and improve individual competence in this area. The study had found out that our country will perform more effectively and efficiently when we revise our current law and mainstream emerging trends in disaster management. Through such a revision, we will improve our capacity to manage disaster nationally and properly regulate incoming international disaster assistance. A comprehensive um, revised national legal framework including provisions catering for international disaster response will ensure a well-coordinated assistance in the event of a major disaster and will encourage prompt assistance for affected persons and assisting international bodies. In conclusion, I urge all participants to eagerly continue to this discussion and present ideas that will help us create laws and policies to improve international response that will simultaneously empower local capacity. On that note, I thank you all for your attention. Thank you. Good morning, um, Mr. Chairman, uh, Permanent Secretary, Office of the President, Mr. Kasama, Governors, uh, of NDR and LRR and Deputy Governor uh, West Coast Region, Executive Director of NDMA, my dear friend, Mr. Haber, Vice President Gambia Red Cross, Acting Vice President Gambia Red Cross, Sene, Maria, my dear colleague from the IFRC, I'm glad to be here with you again, once again, I think the last time we met was in New York. And this is where I'm going to start my intervention and it's going to be focusing on one of the key reasons why we are here, which is about policy, but it's also about localization. And this is where I'm going to anchor uh, my statement. I think we all remember the World Humanitarian Summit in 2016 in Turkey, in Istanbul, where it was declared that a lot needs to be done in terms of localization. 
both in humanitarian but also in development. So, in effect, what localization means basically is the, based on the fact that there is a realization that a lot of the work that is done in country in terms of development or humanitarian is often done by local people but most of it most of the time they don't benefit from the impact of that either development or humanitarian so it was found that it was necessary to focus on building capacities and strengthening local institutions individuals and initiatives so hence the reason for this localization and there has been a lot of processes and lots of discussions that happened after the world humanitarian summit but to come back to this issue of disaster and law i think as, as uh, Abdullahi highlighted, ECOWAS went through a process of developing a humanitarian policy, developing a plan, uh, a plan that looks uh, from 2018 to 2022. In that plan, all ECOWAS, ECOWAS member states contributed both to the policy development but also are included in that plan which means we all have obligations. So here, the obligation of the Red Cross, particularly the Red Cross movement here, when I use the Red Cross movement, I'm talking, referring to here, the uh, IFRC uh, and the Gambia Red Cross and other components of the movement. We have an obligation to support our governments as an auxiliary in ensuring that uh, the they adhere and respect and contribute to implementation of some of those policy frameworks that have been developed. To this end, we are talking about the legal framework for disaster preparedness and response. And if we go back to disaster management, disaster management here is referred to uh, policy, administration, but also operation. So today, as we sit here, we know that each of the three components of disaster management have to go coherently together. One can go without the other. If you have an operation without the legal framework, it doesn't work. I can give you examples uh, of the Ebola outbreak in West Africa. We all know that one of the reasons why it took so long for response to reach those countries was because the legal frameworks were not there in those countries. There were governments were lost in the in the middle in the midst of uh, what I call uh, panic and neglect. In Africa, we have that kind of syndrome. When a disaster strikes, we all panic and we do things uh, wrongly. But at the same time, after some time, we neglect the whole context. We don't really look at what are the reasons, what were the loopholes, why we panicked in the first place. And this is where the law comes in handy. If we have to domesticate disaster law in this country, it means that when any disaster strike in this country, we are able to be guided by those laws in terms of how we react and how we bring assistance, both locally and internationally, most importantly. Because there are some magnitude of disasters where you need the international solidarity. You need the contribution from outside in order to respond most effectively. So these instruments are very important for that. Let's take again the, the Ebola. Access to those countries was difficult simply because governments didn't know what to do. But if there were, there were legal frameworks in those countries, and of course legal frameworks that cuts across the sub-region, it, it would have been easy to access assistance so that the, the, the impact of the epidemic would have been controlled much earlier. Coming back home into the, to the Gambia, I think it's important and it's timely for us to be talking about domesticating disaster law. 
the fact of the matter uh, that we have the enabling environment. I know we've done a study in 2016, and this study identified some gaps. And these are the gaps that we are about to address. But we have the enabling environment today, given the political environment in the country, given the interest that you all have to be here on a holiday. So therefore, I hope we will work towards uh, moving not only within this workshop to make recommendations and to understand the handbook and what the requirements are, but beyond that in terms of ensuring that whenever we sit in our various institutions, we push for the legislation to go through to the various levels of government, to the National Assembly, to be adopted. We know the rains are fast approaching. We know there could be floods. We know there is climate change, it, which is real. We never know. We can see what is happening in Mozambique. That magnitude of disaster. Mozambique government alone cannot manage it. We see all the international aid that is going into Mozambique. That has been facilitated by the instruments that exist. We in the Red Cross are committed and we will do our best to ensure we will, we will help government to push through the legal process, but at the same time to anticipate in terms of what is going to happen. We have an instrument that we call, I think Mr. Dahanda is very much aware of, which is focus-based financing, where we can predict, working with the different institutions to predict what is going to happen. Based on that, we prepare and anticipate and prepare communities so that when the disaster strike, the effects of the disaster is mitigated. So I hope we will use these two days effectively in terms of pushing forward, having a clear understanding of some of the policy processes, but of course how this can be domesticated locally. I would like to uh, finally thank Maria who has been steadfastly supporting and pushing this process but also to thank my dear brother Mr. Dahaba. Um, we've talked a lot this morning about how we work with both of you particularly the governors from the various regions in terms of Governors, Deputy Governors, National Society Representatives, Members of the Governing Board, dear participants and colleagues. It is a pleasure for me to be in Gambia, co-organizing with the Gambia Red Cross, the government of the, the first national workshop on localization of aid for an effective disaster management. As co-conveners of the localization work stream within the Grand Bargain Initiative, the IFRC is committed to strengthening the effectiveness and efficiency of the humanitarian ecosystem by increasing international investment in and respect for the role of local actors, both governmental and non-governmental in humanitarian response, particularly those at the community level. So localization is also about complementarity, which looks at the balance between local and international action in order to maximize the comparative advantages of both and increase effectiveness of the humanitarian response in a given context. So through the Disaster Law Program, uh, the IUFRC has provided technical support to governments on how to prepare their national legal frameworks and plans to overcome the common regulatory problems in international disaster relief. Since the adoption of the IDRO guidelines, which are the guidelines to domestic facilitation and regulation of international disaster relief, we have been providing that support to regional, sub-regional organizations as well as states in enhancing their legal framework for the effective disaster management as we believe that legislation is the foundation.
So in this regard, um, in this particular workshop, we're aiming at looking at not only the national legal framework, but also um, to look at the ECOWAS tools and instruments, as well as the, the international commitments that has been um, adopted by the Gambia, and to see how we can collectively enhance the legal framework for, for an effective uh, disaster management. So in this regard, I wish you all a very fruitful workshop, and thank you once again for your warm welcome to the Gambia. Thanks. Thank you very much, uh, Maria. Uh, the winner was since uh, last year. Maria has been sending us emails. Can you use the possible when I remember to do this? So I think I can start up with this good as well. And then, if not, we could have done it last month also. Uh, we are also expecting the ECOWAS delegation here. Uh, they, uh, that's why it is proposed to uh, April. So money has been very much supportive. And uh, uh, tomorrow, by the time we finish this previous uh, workshop in the Gambia, Mario is traveling that same night, tomorrow night, to send him for a similar activity. So thank you very much, Maria, for your, your efforts. Uh, so I would like to now invite uh, Mr. Seko for Sakasam. Uh, 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 Mr. Chairperson, uh, Director NDMA, Regional Governors NBR, LRR, and Deputy Governor WCR, Secretary General, Gambia Red Cross Society, Mr. Alassan Simon, Disaster Moral Program Coordinator Maria Martinez, distinguished participants, ladies and gentlemen, all protocols respectfully observed. I would like to start by saying Assalamu alaikum to all of you. On behalf of the Secretary General, I would like to convey his profuse apology for not being able to make it to this program this morning. Unfortunately, he had a prior commitment. Um, he is on a mission outside the country. So I have been asked to step in for him. <clears throat> it is with great honor and pleasure that we join you this morning to deliver the official opening statement of this very important and timely national workshop. As a country, we are aware of our vulnerability to climate change and extreme weather conditions that have the potential of disrupting our developmental outcomes, especially in the social and economic sectors. We are happy to know that this workshop has noble objectives and they include to equip authorities with the knowledge of ECOWAS and IFRC tools, Disaster Management Handbook 2018-2022 Plan of Action, ECOWAS Assessment Tool, IDRL Guidelines, Model Act, and Checklist for the Domestic Preparedness and Response. To conduct consultations on the elements of Disaster Management Handbook towards its finalization. To share progress in the field of disaster law at regional and national levels over the past 10 years. To stimulate constructive discussions on the localization of aid through legal facilitation of international response and empowerment of local capacities. Development of ideas and priority areas of focus for future work on disaster law in consideration of existing disaster management legal framework. Chairperson, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, it must be mentioned that the theme of the workshop 
localization of aid for an effective disaster management is urgent and indeed relevant. I think um, uh, drawing upon some of the uh, earlier uh, speakers, um, it has been shown how relevant uh, this team is. Hence, we believe that the objectives of this national workshop will help to put different government departments and our stakeholders at the same level about the happenings and in, uh, investments on uh, disaster risk reduction from the legal, political, technological, social and economic perspectives within the ECOWAS subregion and even beyond. At this juncture, I would like to reiterate that we must all think smart and act transparently in building strong institutions and policies that would, prepare, that would put preparedness, human rights and dignity of the human person at the forefront of our services to our country and people. Furthermore, it goes without saying that over the world, disaster incidents have increased dramatically, an economic loss of almost 151%, an economic loss of almost 151% from disaster-related losses have been recorded within the last generation, thus prompting a global movement of actors who are championing environmental conservation, disaster risk reduction, social protection, especially protecting the lives of the most vulnerable and marginalized in societies. Chairperson, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, according to the UN Office for Disaster, 1.35 million lives were lost during the last 20 years in global disaster recovery across the world. In fact, some scientists and social workers have pointed out that this figure, these figures are seriously underreported due to difficulty in compiling and tracking uh, data in some of the most resource-constrained countries of the world. These economic losses are even more catastrophic and disproportionately affect the poorest countries of the world. In some of these countries, Limited opportunities coupled with unreliable social protection of goods and services have the potential of cutting short the ambition and potentials. Therefore, sensitive to this situation, as a government, we are working hard to empower the National Disaster Management Agency and partners to take a proactive and lead role in reducing disaster uh, uh, related uh, uh, issues and ensuring that the models of disaster preparedness are mainstream in government policies, programs and activities at all levels. Chairperson, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, the government is aware of the close collaboration that have existed between NDMA and the Gambia Red Cross Society. We are proud of this relationship as it is a symbol of synergy between a government institution and a humanitarian body working to strengthen disaster risk reduction and the overall humanitarian structure in the area of disaster and crisis. We look forward to the strengthening of this existing bond of collaboration and partnership. Through this relationship, we are also aware of the fact that Gambia Red Cross Society is supporting the NDMA on global call for laws. Mm -hmm. uh, we all have what we have said, and uh, we need to put partnership in the center and put the people in the center so that we can able to deliver effectively and efficiently. Thank you very much. So uh, the next, uh, <laughs> since I finished school and I've got in all the, the uh, levels of institutes that is I've served the University of Rwanda. That means I talk from lower basic to the college before we come in the Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. My name is Mr. Bishop of Political Governor of Thank you.
the morning, um, Noha Yassin, the chair to the Business Commission, the Red Cross Society. I've also been in the chair before. <laughs> so I see what's there, I'm not for the government Red Cross. <laughs> so thank you very much. Uh, I would like to invite you uh, outside there so that we can have a group for